I'm Larry Vickers of Vickers Tactical, and I'm here with Peter Dahlhammer, and we're at the Walther factory in Ulm, Germany. Peter? Larry, thank you for coming to Germany, to our facility. It. We're going to take you guys through some history of this world-famous small arms company. Peter, if you don't mind, assume that the people who are watching this don't know anything about Walther. Let's kick it off. How did this company get started? Oh, it started quite early, in 1886, and I mean, you have to see 1886, that was the very early days of gunsmithing, gun making. Some people were still using muzzle loaders. And it started for us as a repair shop. And we did Schützen rifles, so competition rifles. And the founder of the company, Carl Walter, he had five sons. And he trained three of them to become rifle makers. So they did an apprentice. And part of this apprentice is also you go on a journey to meet other masters, to get more training, more experience. And one of his sons, Fritz Walter, he picked up the idea that the company needed handguns because he used to, did two years with uh, DWM, Deutsche Waffen und Munitionsfabriken. It was the player in Germany. Um, they manufactured machine guns, Borchardt. World War I. They're World famous. War I, yeah, exactly, the World copy War. of the Maxim machine gun. And Borchardt had designed his pistol there, a kind of old-fashioned toggle link C93 Borchardt pistol. And at the same location, Luger would re-engineer the gun, and that would be the Luger pistol that got introduced by the German army. So Fritz Walter... A 16-year-old kid was in the center, in the middle of everything, and he saw what was going on in the industry. Like revolvers were outdated; everybody was moving towards handguns. Yeah. yeah, and at the same time, Browning came out with very small pistols in uh, 32 caliber. So the idea was that Walter needed its own pistol. And he started a discussion with his father because his father was still into rifle making. And I mean, you also have to see it was a small company, 15 employees. So his son had this radical idea of designing a new handgun and it should be a very small pistol, um, 25 caliber actually. So it took some time until his father was convinced and then they started and designed the Model 1 pistol. And at this time that you're talking about right now, Walther is located in a different part of Germany. Exactly. That is almost like the center of Germany and it's also the center of gunsmithing, Suhl and Zellamelis. It's the state of Thuringia and this is where it all started because at this location they found ore, ore is needed to um, make steel and they had lots of forests, so wood um, to bring up the heat to make ore, uh, to make steel from ore, yeah. We actually have a Model 1 here, right here, and you were saying something about it, what, at the time it wasn't even called a Model 1. Exactly. After we came out with the Model 2, we renamed that to the Model 1, okay? And actually there was a full sequence of pistols and um, the latest one was the Model 9. And of course, anyone who starts collecting our pistols wants to have the oh, yeah. full range of Model 1 through Model 9. Now, you real simple design. Very simple design. 25 caliber, 6-shot magazine and very simple in design also when it comes to the slide, for example. It's this exposed barrel. Parallel to the barrel is the recoil spring, the sides of the slide, covered at area, heel side, mag release, mm -hmm. very simple. And striker fired, by the way. <laughs> How many did you guys make? In what time frame was the Model 1? It started with the first prototypes about 1908, but full, product, full production did not start until 1911. And then I don't know the exact sequence because there was always a transition to the next model. So it's hard to tell. Also, other manufacturers were involved. For example, you would find our Model 3 and Model 4 pistols with different manufacturers uh, marked on it. Got it. Okay, now let's bump forward to, I would argue, the next guns are the ones that really put Walther on the map. 
I mean, those are great. That's where you started. But in terms of the mind of the shooter, the enthusiast, the next pistols we're going to talk about, the PP series, PPK, that is what real, where Walther really came into its own. Exactly. And it's a big milestone. It's an interesting story because Fritz Walter and his team, they combined in this little pistol most of the technology that was available on, on that time, you know. Um, it's got this exposed hammer, double action, single action trigger, so you could just see in which condition the gun was. If you would apply the safety, it would automatically decock the hammer. It's got a loaded chamber indicator, a left side mag release, and also a very attractive design. Absolutely, real sleek. The lines blend together real well. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, it's, it's not about what a company can do. It's always what the customer wants to have. And it's also not about them and us. It's a we. And this is also what we do today. It is, we are involved in the business. We are shooters and we have a lot of input from the market and when you look at this pistol you see the result it's the perfect design it's an iconic pistol yeah now, i would argue for the guns in this category it's the most famous handgun in history and widely copied the russian makarov essentially a dead-on copy of the walther you know pp series per se ppk which a lot of people are aware of is a shortened version correct correct shorter um, barrel and slide and the grip is more compact. The grip panels, they will cover the rear end also so there's no metal backstrap on a PPK pistol. And the PPK came out two years after the PP. So the PP was introduced in 1929 and 1931 it was followed by the PPK. And PP stands for? Polizeipistole, which is police pistol, mm -hmm. and Polizeipistole Criminal, which is the plain clothes or the detective's pistol. Wow, cool. Now, the next gun we're gonna talk about, I would argue that, that that's a historic gun, certainly in the Walther realm, um, because of James Bond and whatnot, people think of that. But the next one in terms of, it, of Walther's impact on the small arms industry in general has to be the most famous handgun, the most famous weapon that Walther ever made, which would be the P-38. It is the successor of the Luger pistol and if we are going about designing a new handgun today we're we would go the same way, still go the same way, which is you look at what the market needs, what is available and then you combine all these features into a new product and the P38 is based on the Luger pistol. So the German army said we need a new pistol which is easier to manufacture, less machining required, parts got to be interchangeable, but then of course it must have almost similar feature like the old army pistol and this is why this gun has an exposed barrel mm -hmm. and the takedown lever Versus. is at the same, same spot like the Luger used to have mm -hmm. the takedown lever. Most of the features on the gun like um, manual safety, exposed hammer, double action, single action trigger have had been out there since 1929 from our PP pistols. Yep. Exactly. So we chambered the gun in 9mm Luger. Of course it needed to have a locked breech, yeah. which is this locking block parallel to the barrel. Different design because we wanted to be as close on the Luger pistol of course. So we couldn't use the same features like the Browning pistols had at that day. but with the exposed barrel, the gun had one huge advantage. In case of a barrel obstruction and a bulge barrel, you still could use the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, the slide doesn't encompass the whole Exactly. Barrel. Exactly. Iconic pistol, I would say the most famous handgun to come out of World War II. And in my opinion, something that all handgun enthusiasts need to have is a P-38. I'm a big fan of the P-38, many of them. This is a major contribution and I would say the only thing missing on this design is a double column magazine. Yeah. Which of course Beretta basically added the Browning high power magazine to the P-38 and became you know, the 92 series M9 Beretta. So that 
the, the double action, single action service pistol that we know of started and ended with the Walther P-38 because now the M9 Beretta has been replaced in the U.S. military. But when you think double action, single action service pistols, most famous in history, P-38 with Walther, of course, would be the most famous name associated to it. Yeah, that started it. And if you look at it, I mean, if you would carry a 1911, you had to make the decision if you want to carry it cocked and locked or if you would drop the hammer by thumb decocking the gun. And this gun, it was so easy. You just make it ready for duty, you decock it, put it in the holster, and that's it. Yeah. If you needed it, you just pull the trigger. Yeah, great pistol, great pistol. Now, you guys no longer make the P38. Exactly. I wish you did. Um, really great gun. Fast forward now, polymer handguns, mm -hmm. all right, 1990s. Where's Walther at that time? Yeah, we were coming from a history of um, a long history of nine millimeter pistols, starting with the P38, and then the sibling of it is the P5 pistol, same locking mechanism. Yeah, same. And then we had in the 80s a P88 pistol, aluminum frame. And in 1993, the company got acquired by Umarex. So new owners, new ideas. And the time had also changed. So there was um, polymer technology available and the new owner said, we want to have a modern pistol. Here it is. The result is the P99 pistol. And for us, it's our first pistol with a polymer frame. A lot of unique features on this gun in terms of double action, single action, striker fired, but still a double action, single action type mechanism. Exactly, and that is because of the guns we used to have, double action, single action, plus maybe it's also due to the German market with the law enforcement community. Starting from the 70s, they had double action, single action pistols, and if you change the design of a new gun too radically, they will not accept it. Nobody. The civilian market, yeah, and so is right. the, the LE market, exactly. So that's why we said we want to have a pistol with polymer technology, but with the features of double action, single action guns that everybody knows. And the result is the P99 pistol. And for example, if you were wondering why we have this opening at the rear end, what we actually see here is the striker, mm -hmm. yeah? and. With the gun having a double action, single action capability, you actually want to have an indication in which condition the firing mechanism is. So if you see the rear end of the striker, you know it's, fully cocked. it's fully cocked, it's single action. If you decock the gun, which the striker decock falls. Right at the top. Yeah, try that. It decocks and now the striker is gone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we combined all that into polymer frame and it was quite well received on the market, yeah. And still being made to this day here in Germany. Exactly. Right? Um, the cosmetics of the gun was revised a few times. Interesting, this gun was much more influential than a lot of people know because there are popular handguns sold by other companies now yeah. in the United States, yeah. which are essentially copies or clones or whatever of the P99. Yeah. Um, it is difficult out there. But on the other hand, it tells you we were on the right track. Absolutely. Plus, it tells us we are an innovative company and mm -hmm. others are following us. We have created some trends on the market. It started in the 30s and um, with double action, single action. And today, of course, it's features like double action, single action in a polymer pistol, but also we created a trend of very slim concealed carry guns. That's our PPS pistol. And in 2019, we created a brand new trend, which is going back to steel. Yeah. Before we get to that, we got to talk about the next step past the P99, which is a PPQ. Yeah. PPQ, to make a long story short, the new design with the front serrations, rear serrations, the grip texturing, the Picatinny rail with the three recoil cuts, that started in 2008. And the idea came when we revised the design for the German police. So that was a design for a gun with a 
preset trigger action and preset means it's a hard trigger. The trigger pull is quite high and it's a long trigger travel. And actually we, fall, we fell so much in love with this new design of the gun with the cosmetics that we said, okay, we want to have that for the commercial market, but we need a better trigger. Mm -hmm. And that's the PPQ, Police Pistol Quick Defense. So it's a, it's a preset trigger. All the trigger does it, it releases the shot. But you said single action, fully, it's single fully action. Cocked. Yes, from the first round to the last round, it's single action. And what customers say is it's the best out of the box trigger on a polymer pistol. Really good trigger, very accurate, well made, reliable gun. This gun is a, this is a, was a winner. I mean, it's a gun that kind of flew under the radar in the United States. Exactly. You know, dialed in gun guys knew about the PPQ. But a lot of people, you know, other than that, didn't. Yeah, some say it's the best kept secret in the gun industry. Yeah. It's a good gun. <laughs> but for us, it's the flagship because it has all the features you're looking for in a modern pistol. It's an attractive design. It's got an adjustable grip size. We use um, interchangeable back straps. And that is another example for an innovative feature that we actually started. Yeah. Nice gun. Now, let's fast forward to the latest and the greatest from you guys, the steel frame. Yeah, the 2019 steel frame. The story is coming from the PPQ pistol with this great trigger. We added some feature to the PPQ pistol. First step was to put on the polymer frame a five inch barrel and slide. Next step was we created the Q5 match. It's a slide which is exactly the same design like this slide on the steel frame and then of course we said okay we are Walter we have this huge business of competition guns we're talking about thousands of dollars for a single shot 22 rimfire rifle we are talking about precision triggers and we said we want to combine that and have a pistol out there on the market which shows what we're capable of doing and that's the steel frame. Mm -hmm. Brand new for 2019. Exactly and it's been very well received on the market. It's almost like the market was waiting for a steel frame pistol with modern technology, striker fired and very good trigger. Yeah, neat gun, very soft shoot, and actually weighs a couple more ounces heavier than the 1911, which is something else. I mean, nine mil. Yes, and yeah. we hear that a lot, reduced muscle flip, mm -hmm. and people just love it. The design is great, it feels great in your hand, the grip texture is great, it's aggressive. Mm -hmm. We have the push button mac release, which is a common feature, everybody loves it, everybody knows where it is exactly. A few years ago we had the pedal Mac release and that was not that well received even though I love it a lot. Yeah, a lot of, it's I, I'm a big fan of the paddle. I'm a big fan of the paddle. Yeah, it's like our it. buddy here at Emory at, at Walter says it's it's something that the professional chooses. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. paddle Mac release I'm it, a big fan. It of. comes naturally and funny enough everybody calls the paddle the German Mac release. Yeah. And actually the push button is a German Mac release because when Colt started for the tender in the United States in the 1905-ish, they had the heel side Mac release mm -hmm. and Luger had the button. Mm -hmm. And then overnight Colt changed to the button. Yep. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's been associated with the 1911 ever yeah. since. Yeah. Pretty cool gun. Cool gun, ambidextrous features on the gun, which is an important feature for today, even though most of the people are right-handed. Some just appreciate the slide stop lever being on the right and left side. And Mac release is one side only, but it is reversible. So you can just remove it and install it on the opposite side. Let me add this. We, yep. we added a beaver tail. Yeah, interesting feature because actually it's not hammer fired. So <laughs> it's, it's not going to snap your hand, but it's just cool looking. Yeah. And it it's helps awesome. with fast draws out of the holster. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So your hands help with that. Yeah. And People with very large hands, it does help protect from the slide. Okay, yeah. Neat gun. Now, from what I understand, you guys are planning on kind of a family of the steel frame, right? Kind of duty guns and whatnot. This was the first, but there's there's other plans. This is the beginning, exactly. And I mean, when a company invests 
money in a new product and in the project, I mean, we're talking about considerable amounts of money, then you want to see how well it is received when you actually launch it. Because in the beginning, you can ask whoever you want and they will tell you, yeah, it's a great gun, I, yeah. will, I will buy it. And then you launch it and then you find out. Once they have to open their pocket, and this gun is a hot seller. So we want to expand that product line, the steel frame line. Um, anything is possible now because it's a frame that is milled out from a solid piece of steel. So we are flexible. We can give it any shape that we want. We can reduce the size of the beaver tail. We can expand it. We can make the, 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 the frame shorter. We can just eliminate the Picatinny ray, for example, which would make it more heavy on the front end. So anything is possible right now. Um, also, either going towards a defense pistol or going towards Ipsic Shiri shooting or practical shooting with adding some fancy features to the gun. Cool. Well, I greatly appreciate it, Peter, taking us through Walther. Hopefully a lot of people kind of got educated on some of the history of this famous company. Thank you very much, Larry. It was great. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it.